Hello, everyone. Welcome to Development Palettes. I am Aaron Loomis, and with me, as always, is June Liu. How are you doing, June? Yep. Totally close to the heart today. <laughs> And along with us again uh, on this one is Seth Geis. How are you doing, Seth? <laughs> I'm doing well. I'm, I'm doing well. Living life. Not blind. <laughs> All right. So today we are talking about the Camacho Nicaraguan Barrel Age Toro. Uh, cigar is 6 inch by 50 ring gauge. Comes out of the uh, Diadema Cigars de Honduras factory in Honduras. Uh, wrapper is Ecuadorian Connecticut. Uh, binder is Mexican Negrito San Andres. And the filler is Honduras, Nicaraguan Corojo 99, and Dominican Pilero Cubano. Um, price point is $11, and the cigar was released in June of 2017. Uh, so, with all that out of the way, uh, Seth, how was the pre light experience for you? Pre light experience is, is it, it, I think this varies. We can get to the overall thing, but. With the end, but it has a nice aroma. Um, you really get some like oak and, and some some sweet rum characteristics. Um, but there's also a little bit of spiciness present as well, with you know, with some leather. Um, the wrapper has this really nice Colorado color. It's it's constructed well, and it's it's got a nice cold draw, which is kind of giving off a lot of the flavors which you get from the aroma. Yeah. All right, June. So let's get into the flavor. What was your uh, flavor experience like? Um. First third, uh, surprisingly, I got like notes like baking spices, uh, which I didn't expect to get off of something that was rum barrel age, but uh, it was pretty prominent baking spices, a uh, bunch of dry wood coming through. Uh, it was leathery. Uh, it was like a generic sweet cream to it, uh, which um, was a little surprised by that as well. I mean, given that it's rum, you know, I, I really expected that rum, you know, style of molasses sweetness with like a really jam stone fruit going on. but. At that point, just a generic sweet cream. Um, the finish, uh, it really lathers the palate with a really long lingering leather, baking spices and black pepper. Uh, retro, uh, pretty good dose of black pepper uh, and heighten uh, that same generic sweet cream coming through with the mixed nuts. Uh, strength, uh, near medium, full body at a consistent medium. Uh, in terms of second third, um, I thought second third is kind of where the cigar started hitting its uh, stride. Um, so for one, that baking spice is uh, amplified. It kind of gives it like an effervescent kind of a sensation to it. Um, the sweetness also increased. Uh, and then almost at that point, it tasted like a rum-like sweetness, uh, giving me more of that like, uh, like syrupy molasses thing going on uh, with a little bit of like really ripe, uh, sweet stone fruit. Um, so other mild draw flavors are the black pepper, dry wood is still really ever uh, it's still really prevalent um retro uh probably my favorite part of the cigar uh deeper black notes of black pepper uh mixed nuts uh that consistent jam stone fruits um finish still long lingering with leather black pepper uh strength still at that medium full spot and medium uh, on the body uh within a sec within the very last third uh i thought that it kind of reverted back to the first third uh, where that sweetness was less identifiable as like a rum sort of sweetness uh, and going back to that generic sweetness um, Profile is still heavily baking spice oriented uh, as, in addition to the leather and dry wood uh, and lingering black pepper uh, Retro is still where it's at. I mean it still gave me that deeper black pepper uh, stone fruit uh, and mixed uh, cream nuts um, Strength still medium full uh, and body medium so how about you, Seth? What was your, what was your flavor experience like? Whoa. Uh, first third was very pretty similar to June's actually, and I found it to be you know there's a lot of like cream, there's some oakiness. I, I did get some like rum sweetness to it, um, and then on the finish there's some, there's some a little bit of earth and leather and some black pepper, um, but it's it's really it's really smooth. I feel like, um, and then it's I would say it's probably medium all around. Um, when I get into the second, third, like June, I think the complexity picks up. Um, there's more nuttiness present. Um, there is some, you know, I, I call it Asian spice, but it, it has that creamy oak and rum sweetness to it with a little bit of black pepper, earth and leather on the finish. Um, it picked up a little bit in terms of strength and body in this third. Um, nothing major though. Um, I'd still say it's probably medium, medium full. Um, and then the final third kind of continues with some of the second third. It's a little bit softer. 
Um, so we're showing some of the complex flavors, you know, creamy oak, um, that rum, nuts, leather, tobacco. There's a little bit of, you know, chocolate earth kind of a vibe to it as well. Um, but it's, it's, you know, it's medium, medium full maybe at best, um, cigar and in terms of flavor and strength and so forth. Yeah. Yeah. For me, I kind of got that same, uh, start that June did, uh, I got wood and baking spice. Um, baking spice didn't seem like it almost wanted to be a little bit of cinnamon, but it wasn't quite there. Um, you know, a little bit further in that baking spice note was kind of muddled. It just wasn't very defined. Um, but the wood note was still kind of hanging on. Um, as it went along a little further, I got a really long black pepper finish on it. And, uh, the retro hill was kind of a, a mix of that wood and the black pepper. Um, and then like an inch and a half in, um, that long pepper finish had subsided and I began to get little, um, hints of like floral notes from time to time. Um, and the strength was kind of just slightly below medium in that, in that first third. Um, in the second third, kind of wooden baking spice kind of continued on still some floral notes from here from time to time. Um, kind of at a quarter inch in or so that, uh, the wood and the spice became much more intertwined. Um, and it got a little bit of a, a bitterness that joined in on the profile. Um, a little further in, that spice completely left, um, just kind of a, a slightly drying wood that was remaining. Um, and then as the second third was coming to a close, um, a little bit of that ba baking spice came back um, and the strength had bumped up to just be right at medium. And then the final third, um, the smoke became chewier, chewier with like a, you know, that, more of that wood and the slight baking spice that are just, just more fuller. Um, still pockets of slight bitterness that were present. Um, and the retro hill carried like a very smooth wood note uh, with a little bit of creaminess to it. Um, and a little bit further in, I got a little bit of mintiness that kind of joined in as the cigar was heating up a little bit. Um, that's pretty much how the cigar finished out for me. Um, and the strength had bumped up again slightly, just be a little bit above medium. Uh, so getting construction, uh, June, what was your burn and uh, draw like? Um, I really did the burn good. Um, so I smoked three of these samples. Um, and, you know, within every single one of these samples, uh, the wrapper just kind of refused to burn properly. Um, so, you know, as a result, a couple of minor touches were required. Um, ashes, uh, it was pretty flowery as well. Um, but other than that, I mean, the cigar burned pretty cool. It's, uh, it's burned slow. Um, it never overheated. So uh, no real complaints in that sense. In terms of the draw, uh, I thought it was perfect. Um, just a matter of, you know, random amount of resistance uh, and airflow and, uh, you know, every, every cigar should draw like this. What about you, Seth? What was your construction like? Yeah, I mean, the construction was, you know, I've smoked a lot of these, um, and the construction really was perfect with each one. I always found, like, I got a great burn line. The ash held on well. Um, really nice kind of light charcoal-colored ash. Um, and, and, you know, I didn't have any issues that June did, but, you know, like June, I, I thought the draw was perfect on these. These are the ones I smoked. Um, I've smoked different samples. Um, great, great construction on them. Great construction. Yeah, for me, the burn was just slightly wavy at times and then razor sharp at others. Um, ash held on in, you know, just over one inch increments, so not really any, you know, complaints in regards to that. Um, and for the draw, it was just a little slightly tighter than I prefer, but it, it wasn't anything, no big deal to cause any issues with the smoking experience. So it was very, you know, very good burn and draw for me overall. Um, so what are your final thoughts on this cigar, Jim? Um, so I'm not typically a fan, well, actually, 99.9% of the time, I'm not a fan of stuff that's infused. Like, you know, barrel aged, infused, none of that stuff. I, I like raw, natural, fermented tobacco. Um, but when I read about this one, I was really interested because first I read about, you know, taking Corojo and then barrel aging in rum barrels. Uh, and I expected, and uh, ideally, what my expectations were, if they were to hit at all levels, was you take Corojo wrapper, something that's a very uh, rich, robust kind of a flavor experience, uh, and then you pair that with like a really nice dark rum that gives like that really like vanilla molasses, uh, really jammy kind of a characteristic to it. Uh, that was my ideal, uh, you know, tasting profile that I was expecting. Uh, I feel like within this Vitola, anyways, uh, it didn't quite match that for me. Uh, you know, it, it, it hit, yeah, it hit the spiciness, it hit the sweetness, uh, but it wasn't really easily identifiable. Um, as a matter of fact, if you didn't tell me that this was barrel age, I would have never guessed it. Uh, I would have, and of course, I would have never guessed what that said. I would have never guessed that it was Asian rum barrels. Um, you know, 
there were some good aspects to it, uh, but overall, I was let down by uh, not matching up to the literature that I read about it. Um, I think if I were to, if you know, Camacho ever makes this, um, I'd like to try more of the wrapper on this cigar, uh, i.e. a thinner ring gauge, to see if, like, the rum, you know, pulls through a bit more. What about you, Seth? What are your final thoughts? Yeah, you, you know, I actually, the more I've smoked of these, I, I really enjoy them and kind of, take them for what they are um i may have spent too much time looking over all like the documents and, and pamphlet that camacho sent us but they do have like this like spreadsheet which kind of compares it with the american barrel age and when you look at it you're like okay that makes that makes sense and you can kind of then look at that and be like yeah this is what the cigar is delivering um it, it's at first i thought this was really gimmicky like nicaraguan barrel age we just had american barrel age what the hell are they going to do next um but if, if you know if you look at it, if you smoke the cigar not thinking about American Barrel Age or Camacho, I think you can actually really enjoy it and, and take it for what it is. I, I do think it delivers kind of a, a light rum sweetness to it, but it's not overpowering. I think the American Barrel Age kind of really is much more powerful and pronounced. Um, but it's just kind of a, a medium, creamy, smooth, smooth cigar, and it, it's not. It's not like mind blowing, but it, but it's a good stick. Um, and I think it's kind of, you know, I think it'd be like, you know, if you, if you like the concept of barrel age, but you can't smoke as a full body or a full strength cigar, I think the Nicaraguan barrel age would be the way to go. If that makes any sense. Yeah. Yeah. For me, I was really hoping to gain some of those, you know, rum notes in the blend, but um, I didn't really get that. I mean, I you mentioned the American barrel age. So I, I kind of liken that this cigar to that cigar because I didn't get much, if any, of the barrel age notes in either one of them. It, maybe it's just too subtle for my palate to pick up, but it was just, you know, I was kind of waiting for that to. And typically, you're gonna, you think you're gonna get it right away because that's, you know, the cigar's fresh. You're just gonna kind of, you know, pick that up. Um, I just didn't get any of that. I mean, I thought the first third was was good. Um, but then it kind of just was kind of averaged out the rest of the way. Um, I mean, nice construction, but you know, flavor is the name of the game. So, um, it just didn't, it just didn't, didn't, uh, let's not go June said it didn't deliver in regards to the barrel aging concept that I think we're looking for. And, you know, obviously I think they don't want to, you know, hit people over the head with the, the rum notes because then people are thinking, Oh, this is more like a really an infused cigar when they're just trying to, you know, bring on notes of, notes of it so um I, I definitely like to smoke more of these and i do um seth you said you smoked quite a few and you've seen a little bit of inconsistency in between some of them so you know maybe if i smoke another one or two i might be able to you know get one that's got a little bit more of a concentration of it or something like that i think yeah, i smoked like eight of them to get a good gauge on this cigar <laughs> that dude i'm telling you i've smoked like a crap ton of these things and <laughs> and, and, and there's you are going to find, in at least my opinion, and Camacho may disagree, I think you're going to find inconsistencies throughout each one. Um, you know, originally I thought like the Tubos, the Robustos would deliver more, um, but then I found that those are actually less and in, more inconsistent um, mm -hmm. than these. I mean, and these, were, these came from a box. Um, so it, I just think some of them are going to be more than, than others. I think Coop said he's found that as well. Um, I've heard that from other um, consumers. The one thing is I, I just wouldn't put these in your humidor with other stuff, if that makes any sense. Right. And, and the one thing that Coop said that was interesting was like taking them out of cellophane and then aging them separately in a cedar box and seeing how that changes the cigar. Mm -hmm. um, but it's, yeah, I mean, it's, I smoked a lot of them. Yeah. I don't know why. But here I am. You wanted to like them, man. So getting into the <laughs> scores, I gave it a 5.85. June gave it a 5.90. And Seth, you gave it a 7.78. So June, how do you think your score matches up with your experience? Um, matched up pretty well. I mean, in terms of flavor profile, I overall rated it average. Uh, good construction, overall average experience. Um, yeah, so, so yeah, sounds good. How about you, Seth? Yeah, it's probably it's probably higher than it, it probably deserves. Um, I probably probably more around the sixes. I don't think I'd give it a seven. It's it, it, it's a good cigar. It's not. This isn't mind blowing. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's not like this terrific stick, but it's a good stick. I think it's 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 an interesting cigar to try, and I think people should. But I, I yeah, I mean, it's it delivered well. I think 
the, the more I smoke to these, the better they are. I'm not telling you everyone like, Hey, you got to smoke 10 of these to really start liking them. Right. Um, but you really need to smoke a whole box before you really get behind. <laughs> um, <laughs> <of course. laughs> by that point you've committed. Yeah, that's right. Um, so yeah, it's, it's a little bit higher than I thought, but it's a bit sick. Yeah. I'm in line with June. I thought it was, you know, I gave it a good in the first third, but otherwise it was an overall average, uh, in regards to flavors. Um, very, you know, very good construction. So that, that helps out a little bit, but you know, like I said, flavor is the name of the game. So, um, yeah, I mean, I, I'm definitely interested in smoking more of these. I think people should try them. You know, if, if you like rum, if you like barrel aged things, beer and whatnot, it's worth a try and see, you know, see what you think. But, um, you know, it's not like it's not a super strong cigar. It's kind of, you know, at least for me and Seth, it sounded like it was kind of more of around the medium profile. So um, it's not going to bash you over the head or anything like that. So it's probably worthwhile. It doesn't um, really fit in with what you think of when you think of with barrel age. Right. Because barrel age is usually, you know, higher alcohol content yeah. and all that kind of stuff. And yeah, this doesn't that. do that. This doesn't do that at all. Yeah. Any other final thoughts from you guys? I think I think this cigar is you know, one thing that we all know that Davidoff and, and the Camacho umbrella of Davidoff does well is they know how to market these things. Like they know how to target cigar smokers and say, "Man, because I mean, what cigar smoker doesn't love? There's very few cigar smokers that doesn't love pairing especially rum with cigars, mm -hmm. right? And then you do the whole like uh, like Puerto Cana and the whole Nicaraguan you know heritage behind that, like. It's gonna sell, like no doubt it'll sell. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, you don't even tell you stuff. It's good. It's gonna sell anyway. That's right. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's it'll be. I'll be interested to see how the batches of these go. Um, yeah, I don't know if anyone's like smoked any like recent American barrel age. I, I don't think they are what they were when they first came out. Mm. Um, so I'll be interested to see what continuous production of these is like. Um, yeah. It may go downhill. May they may keep it up. I don't know. Yeah, there's a couple more of these that we. <laughs> there's a couple more that we get to try. So we could try the late hour. So we'll see how that is with the Scotch infusion. You know. Scotch yeah, barrels. there's the there is a late hour. And then um, we'll get to try the uh, Imperial Stout uh, barrel age that Dojo did. So we'll get to see how that is. So there'll be a couple more of these. You know, kind of under the Davidoff umbrella that we'll get to see. Um, I would definitely say I probably enjoyed this cigar better than the American barrel aged. Um, but you know, I don't know if that's good or bad, but yeah. So we are it's, doing it's number two out of the whole barrel aged stuff that I've smoked. Oh, okay. Okay. So if you're just catching this, as soon as we release it, we're doing a contest for a week. We're going to give away a five pack of these cigars. So, um, if you uh, want to enter that, go over to the website and, uh, enter. Um, otherwise, um, subscribe to us on YouTube, follow us on all the social media channels, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Google Plus, and you can catch all of the review recaps on podcasts, so iTunes, Google Play, and Podbean. Uh, thank you for tuning in, and we will catch you on the next one.